Matters. The content of the following program, including all statements from the hosts and guests, is to provide general information and commentary about the law. Under no circumstances does any statement made by the host or guest to a caller or listener constitute legal advice or the formation of an attorney-client relationship. And the material from this program shall not be viewed as substitute for a personal consultation with an attorney. Now, prepare yourself to be informed and entertained by Gus Bravo and Neil Kotze, two AV-rated trial lawyers who have been practicing law for a combined total of nearly 40 years. For the next 30 minutes... They will share their insight and commentary on important legal issues affecting all of us. Two lawyers walk into a bar. One lawyer says to the other, I've got an ethical problem that I need to discuss with you. And his friend says, okay, let's do it over a drink. So they sit at the bar and the one lawyer says, I had a client come in today and I gave him some really good legal advice as he was sitting in my office. And at the end of giving him legal advice, he turned to me and he said, so how much do I owe you? I looked at him and I said, just $100 for today. And he handed me a brand new crisp $100 bill. And his lawyer friend says to him, well, that's great. What's the problem? He says, let me tell you about the problem. That $100 bill was so crisp that after he left my office, I found out that there was another brand new $100 bill stuck to the back of it. <laughs> and so immediately the ethical question arose. Should I tell my partner? <laughs> Hi. Welcome to Attorney Confidential with Gus and Neil. I'm Neil Kotze. And I'm Gus Bravo. And thank you for that joke, Neil. That, that kind of reminds me that uh, to kick off our show of uh, Scene from Major League for those of uh, you who are movie buffs when Bob Euchre said, you know, you can tell a lot on how season's going to start by the first play. <laughs> and if you remember the first play, that was the oops bunt right. that the guy accidentally got into first base. So hopefully that's a good symbol, positive symbol for us on this show, the, the joke for those of you who enjoyed it. In any event, the, the purpose of our show here today is, is to hopefully try to debunk some myth. The reason we let off with a joke, purposely, I might add, is because uh, lawyers, we think, get a bad rap. Um, we obviously two lawyers ourselves, and, and we think that there's a lot of negative light, uh, a negative myth out there that we're hoping to spin a more positive light to it. Uh, we want to reveal a more realistic, uh, a more um, sort of like a reality TV show, if you will, um, side to lawyers, uh, letting people know that lawyers are people too. Um, so we're going to try to debunk the myth and perhaps maybe even confirm it at some point. Uh, but in a nutshell, Neil, we're going to expose ourselves to the public. Oh, you didn't tell me that, that <laughs> detail. Hopefully this isn't being videoed. But, uh, yeah, that is our Just goal. Just from the waist up. <laughs> <laughs> that is our goal. Is uh, That's why Attorney Confidential. Um, because we're going to talk about some of the things that you might think are confidential and, and talk about the legal profession, talk about legal issues that hopefully will inform and educate as well as entertain. Well... Back on point, I think the topic of today's show, um, we decided appropriately enough, it's what's in the name. Uh, we want to explain to you why we chose Attorney Confidential uh, with Gus and Neil. Obviously, I think we added the Gus and Neil part just so we're okay with some trademark uh, and copyright. And, and, and in all reality, it, it's I wanted it to be Neil and Gus, but Gus won the coin toss. <laughs> Um, also, when we heard Neil and Gus, if you say it really too fast, it sounds like a bad steak at a restaurant, <laughs> Angus. So we went with the Gus and Neil instead. I've been, I've been called worse. Thank yes, you very yeah. much. By me, I think it does. <laughs> well, the, you know, the, the reason for the topic, what's in the name, it, it's very important. Uh, I mean, you're, you're talking to someone or you're listening to someone whose full legal name is Gustavo Alfonso Bravo Vidal. Uh, needless to say, the first day of school was always fun for me. Um, and so when I was choosing, for instance, a name for my law firm, uh, obviously I didn't want to go with the full name, uh, Law Offices of Gustavo Alfonso Bravo Vidal. It just didn't have the same uh, ring to it. So I, I went with Bravo Law. Very simple, short, and sweet. Now, unfortunately, there was someone who beat me to the punch and had already gotten the, the domain name bravolaw.com. So I creatively, very, very astutely, just decided to switch it and put Law Bravo. So my law firm domain is Law Bravo. I don't know what sort of mind frame you had when you were choosing. Well, it's, it, it, yeah. I actually had the exact opposite situation. I, I wanted to go with Codsey Law, and actually there's uh, as rare a name as Codsey is, there's actually a Codsey Law here in South Florida, 
Uh, and the attorney's not related to me, but it's just odd that there's that name. You want to so, give him a plug now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I went with the law offices of Neil DiCazzi. And, and for those of you listening, Gus and I do a lot of work together as attorneys, but we actually have our own separate firms. So is yours law office or law offices? It's law offices because I have offices both in Plantation and in uh, North Miami Beach. Right. So folks, when you're, uh, whatever business you may be in, uh, legal, non-legal, um, obviously when you, it comes to choosing a name for your business, it's, it's, it's critical. And now there are a whole host of uh, legal ramifications that come into play uh, when you're choosing a name. Obviously you have to deal with some trademark copyrights and, and intellectual property issues. Uh, that's not what this show is going to be about. Uh, I think this show is going to be more about a different side of some of the legal uh, consequences or potentially legal significance of choosing a name properly. I know, Neil, you've had some experience with some interesting uh, examples right. of I mean, it's, choosing it's, um, a name properly. A, as Gus said, you have to look at copyright, and when you choose a name, you need to make sure that no one else has it. Um, also, choosing a name for a product, if you sell a product or you make a product, can be important because that name uh, leads to certain implications. One of my favorite stories as a young lawyer, I was a first-year lawyer uh, back in 1991 sitting in my first deposition in a product liability case. And if you've, most of you, I think, have probably been through a supermarket in your life. And if you go through the supermarket or the grocery store and you see those things that stick out on the aisles that have little toys for kids or they stick out on the aisles that uh, have other uh, products for your pets hanging on them. They always put, by the way, as an aside, sorry to interrupt, they always put the most expensive thing for the kids at the bottom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, that product placement. Within the kids' reach, right. <laughs> exactly. So, and, and what happened was uh, we had somebody who had actually slipped to the grocery store and fell and unfortunately, I hope no one's eating while they're listening to this. Actually, the no from stuck, six to six thirty. Yeah, we're probably okay. Yeah. Uh, actually, poked their eye out. They lost their eye as a result. Ooh. And uh, during the deposition of the uh, manager of the grocery store, uh, he was asked, uh, "By the way, what are those things called?" Because as you heard me describe it earlier, I was saying that thing that sticks out that holds the products. Well, <laughs> it had a very unfortunate name for that case. Uh, some of you may already know they're called eye catchers. Ooh. Um, so. <laughs> Uh, that case settled very quickly, uh, but uh, names are important. What we well, choose to name things play an important role in, in how they how we deal with them. You're not always going to be able to predict something like that happening, but I, I think you have to give it some thought. And, and, and as we were trying to come up with a name for this show, uh, Neil and I went through a whole host of different types of names, uh, and we narrowed it down to some some top three, if you will. We had a lot more than that. I know, Neil, I, I think you may have still your list of the of the, the, the final three that did not make the cut. Oh, yeah. I have my, my favorites. Uh, you have to brainstorm when you're coming up with a name anyway. And so, for so example... You avoid the eye catcher example. Um, yeah. From your house to the courthouse with Gus and Neil, that, that <laughs> one didn't fly for either one of us. Our spouses well, didn't like for, it either. For, for those, again, movie buffs, since you will notice, well, Neil and I are, are for those of us, those who even know us, we're huge movie buffs, and everything ultimately has a movie reference at some point. So from our house to the courthouse, uh, it's the uh, nothing in common. Right, right? Tom Hanks. Right. When Colonial Boardman, Airlines, yes, from Boardman. your home to our home. Yeah, <laughs> from your home to our home to their home in the sky, board Colonial Airlines, <laughs> yes. What was the next one? Now, the next one, um, it was a little more simplistic. Uh, Kind of like the joke I started off with, two lawyers walk into a radio station. That had potential. Yeah, but, but we rejected that one yeah. pretty quickly. And then, then finally, and we have several of these, uh, lawyers or people too, with Gus and Neil. That was late at uh, night. That was late well, at night. Look, I maybe, mean, maybe Scotch was involved in that one too. But. <laughs> well, I, I, think, I think, look, it, it's funny, but there was a reason why you had the lawyers or people too. I, I think part of that was to try to convey, again, a more positive friendlier side to lawyers there's I, I, there there are all hosts of jokes that again show lawyers in a very negative light and i, I think right. we like to uh, see ourselves a little bit uh, nicer guys we're practicing law uh we, we certainly uh push and uh, trying to advance our clients cases but uh, we, we, right. we we have hearts too and one of the things hopefully if, if you continue to listen to our show and for new listeners that come on board one of the things we're going to talk about in future shows are examples of pro bono work that right. lawyers do around Florida and, and really around the country. Uh, both Gus and I are very proud in some of the pro bono work we've been able to do. For those of you that may not know what pro bono work is, 
Uh, pro bono is work that's done for people who can't afford lawyers, in a nutshell. Um, and oh, and the lawyer doesn't get paid, and he converts oh, yeah, it to and pro, pro bono. Pro bono means a lawyer doesn't get paid. <laughs> And by the way, if you my, get stiff with the bill. <laughs> I've been I've been suffering with a sinus infection that that I thought was allergies, and Gus finally told me I needed to go to the doctor, and sure enough, he was right. So my voice is a little raspy. It'll get better, uh, hopefully next week. But um, that is one thing I think that people we want to people to understand is that there's a lot of good things out there that lawyers do, and we're going to talk about some pro bono cases that each of us have done over the years uh, to help people and and other lawyers, not just us. And what was the thought process behind? Uh, two lawyers walk into a radio station other than the scotch well that was more along the lines of a little bit of humor and and look we we hopefully this show will entertain everybody uh i'm sure we will have laughs uh but it's important somebody said to me years ago when i i tried my first case uh and i think i told one or two too many jokes because i used to do some stand-up comedy when i was in college and partner pulled me aside and i thank god i won but he pulled me aside and he said there's a difference between being humorous in a courtroom and being right. the court jester. And so as lawyers, we have to learn not to cross that line. But we're on a radio show now, so hopefully we'll have a little humor and we'll have a little fun as well as talk about some interesting legal topics throughout. Right. Did I get your, all, your three? I yeah, think you got I did. my three. Okay. So then my, my top three, uh, in no particular order, uh, the first one was legal musings. And, you know, the thought process behind that was just the sort of the – you know, off the cuff banter, uh, you know, random evidence of a cluttered mind. Uh, this is uh, Greg Cody, who's a uh, sports writer for the Miami Herald. I'm a big, big sports uh, buff. So I, I've, I've list, you know, I started with Edwin Pope back Miami Herald. And now Greg Cody is among the still old guard standing there. And he has a column that's called Random Evidence of a Cluttered Mind, which I think is ingenu ingenious because he just basically lays out a bunch of random thoughts, fast, rapid fire type of thoughts. Uh, which I've always liked, uh, but I was told uh, by someone close to me, I, my wife, if you're listening, yeah. you should be, um, that uh, people don't necessarily want to go to lawyers who have a cluttered mind. And so maybe you want to have a little bit more organized structure to it. Uh, so, I, so we rejected that one because it didn't, didn't seem serious enough. Um, the next one that I had was Lawyers Uncensored. Uh, I think, Neil, you rejected that. But I'm not sure why. If you, I don't remember why either, actually, because <laughs> at some I, level it probably is appropriate, but maybe attorney confidential. Well, I, I think we didn't want to have like a black box following the video. I know this is going to be videotaped, but, you know, you get the, the image of, you know, the uncensored videos that there's a certain parts that are being, right. you know. Anyways, um, the last one was Lawyers Uncut. Which? You know, look, I, 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 you can tell from my last name I'm from Latin America. I'm, I, I'm originally from Chile. And, uh, and Neil, uh, you're obviously, I celebrated yeah. yesterday, Easter right. Sunday, and Neil, you're celebrating. I'm celebrating Passover, right. and, and a very special holiday for my family, uh, because my father is actually an Egyptian Jew. Right. So uh, Passover has special meaning for us, and, and the reason that we rejected Uncut is because being Jewish, you know, when I was eight days old, that, that's just not true. So, <laughs> so uh, it only applies to half <laughs> right, the right, Exactly, so that doesn't work. <laughs> All right. Oh, I'm sorry, we're going to go to commercial break now. Uh, and, and forgive us for ironing out a little bit of the kinks. This is our first radio show, so we'll get it the hang of it soon enough. Attorney Confidential with Gus and Neil is being brought to you by the law offices of Neil D. Codsing and Bravo Law. Bravo Law is a business litigation firm known for providing common sense solutions to small businesses and individuals throughout South Florida. Mr. Bravo is rated AV by Martindale Hubble and Superb by AVVO, the highest ratings available from these two entities. The law offices of Neil D. Kotze is a litigation boutique with offices in Broward and Miami-Dade counties. Mr. Kotze is a veteran trial lawyer with nearly 25 years of jury trial experience. He is also a two-time recipient of the South Florida Daily Business Review's Most Effective Lawyer Award, a recipient of numerous awards for providing pro bono legal services and has been recognized by the National Law Council. Call our office 786-464-0841 or 954-790-6711 and get informed. You're listening to Attorney Confidential with Gus and Neil. If you have a comment, question, or just want to contribute to the conversation, call the show at 888-565-1470. And share your thoughts on what's going on. Now, 
back to Gus and Neil for more Attorney Confidential. And we're back. Uh, thank you for the five of you, I guess, your wife, my wife, our kids uh, rejoining us. And I think my parents are listening. Okay, good. That makes sense. In seven. Chattanooga, Tennessee, a call out to mom <laughs> and dad. Uh, if you want to call on the show, it's toll free, 1-888-565-1470. you have any questions that we may not be able to answer, we'll be happy to dance our, tap dance our way around it. Um, I noticed, Neil, I uh, couldn't help by listening in the... Uh, and the break that your plug is a little bit longer than mine. Uh, we're both AV rated. Uh, we're both superb by AVO. Uh, but then you had something with the Miami Dade uh, da- business business review, I think. Daily uh, business review. Yeah, the, the the daily business review. So you paid them extra to know they yeah, give you that a- extra exactly. plug. Now, all kidding aside, actually, Neil um, is a two time recipient of the most effective lawyer uh, award in the ten year history. So kudos to you on that. Uh, as I joked with, with people, he that just means he took a lot of people out to drinks and bought them a lot of free drinks along the way. Um, but anyways, we're back on topic with what's in the name. Uh, I think we had uh, narrowed down our list and, and gone back uh, our top three. And now we're, we, we were back to why we chose Attorney Confidential. Um, and I, as I mentioned earlier, I think part of it is to just try to pull the, you know, reveal a little bit more about the other side. Uh, the side that a lot of the folks don't get to see about lawyers. It's kind of like peeling back the onion on the law. Give you a chance to expose the center core. Uh, but uh, the I goal- think you're, you're getting perilously close there. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't want to violate <laughs> any FCC keep, regulations. Don't keep going with yeah, those let's analogies. Let's not go any further. Okay. But, um, but no, I mean, that that is the goal of the show. There's going to be a lot of uh, background on some legal cases as we go through in the news. Um, hopefully we will announce our topics well enough in advance for people to know what they are and we'll be creating a Facebook page and, and uh, be on LinkedIn. Uh, being our first show, we haven't gotten to that point yet, but hopefully that will be soon. And, and, and by the way, we, we meant to plug our good friend Jeff Bantris earlier. Um, he's got, uh, obviously his show is more on the informative uh, side and, and I think it's, 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 uh, he's got a guest coming up tomorrow. Um, and um, and it's every Tuesday from six to six thirty, uh, and Jeff does some really wonderful work on the intellectual property side. I know his firm. If you need someone to uh, help you with that process, certainly Jeff's firm is a good source to turn to. Obviously, if the, you know what hits the fan and you got to go to court, then uh, I think they may punt it back to us. Right. That's uh, Gus and I. As as you heard in the uh, segue bef- during the midway point, are both trial lawyers. That's what we do. So our focus will be primarily on issues that go to trial. I mean, I used to describe myself as just an old country trial lawyer, and that's I'm happiest speaking to a jury. And, and maybe because of the old joke that, you know, who sits in a jury box of 12 people that aren't smart enough to get out of jury duty. <laughs> but uh, and that's It's now audience, six here. Right, it's now six. But that's the audience I play best to. But, uh, but seriously, that's, uh, we'll talk a lot about trials, and we're going to talk a lot about cases that are being tried, and uh, try not to overly critique uh, what we see, but it's not like what you see on TV. It's not like the LA Law show of the past or any of the shows that really show courtrooms on TV. Yeah, no, it, it, but there there are some movies, uh, especially that are, are are pretty pretty accurate and, and humorous at the same time. One of our favorite is is, is my cousin Vinny, uh, and, and we were thinking about it and, and you tell us what you think for the the, the seven of you who are are listening, uh, your parents included in Chattanooga. Uh, of the Vincent Gambini Award for the most creative legal argument. Uh, my cousin Vinny, funny, but the trial scenes, I don't know, Neil, if you disagree, but the trial scenes, I think, are pretty accurate. I mean, relatively speaking, but they're, they're, they do a very good job of, of painting how simple a trial should be presented. Right. I mean, one of one of my criticisms when I, I teach the NIDA trial seminar of at NOVA for young lawyers That's- is... Plug number one. Go oh, ahead. <laughs> <laughs> is uh, is that people tend to take cases and make them two weeks long when you really can? It's like that old show for those of you that are my age or older that used to watch Name That Tune, and it really I can name that trial in three days, and other people maybe want to name it in two weeks. And I think that that's some of the things that we see in trials a lot. Is my cousin Vinny showed how simplistic a trial really can be and yet be realistic? Yeah, lawyers, we tend to be verbose. Um, and, and unfortunately, when a few words will do, we'll, we'll say a whole paragraph. Um, and what I like about my cousin Vinny is, is just the, the cross-examination. Now, my favorite scene, personally, is the opening statement scene 
which I think is a classic what you should do as a defense lawyer. Uh, yeah. In the opening statement, I'm not going to repeat that because obviously then we'll vote. certainly well, Clark cross line FCC. In a, my my favorite no, my favorite cross examination again. Maybe I'll age myself for the younger audience. If you remember L.A. Law, which was on, I believe in the 90s, uh, maybe even the 80s. Uh, middle school I, and high school for me. You were. I was in college and law school. So yeah. I think yeah, the 80s. Uh, Stuart, I uh, believe his name was Markowitz, the tax attorney, got to try his first case when a um, rabbi took a little bit too much off during a circumcision. Oh. Oh, yeah, it just, you know, Gus and I are now crossing our legs in pain <laughs> as we think about that. But but it was, I, I actually played that video uh, for cross-examination because it's a perfect example of sometimes when you cross-examine someone at trial, all you need are two or three questions. Uh, when the lawyer got up to cross-examine the rabbi, he actually asked the rabbi, he said, I only have a few questions for you. He says, one is, uh, when you do a circumcision, you say a blessing in Hebrew, correct? Right. The rabbi, right. I'm saying right as if I okay, know, yeah, but I'm going along know, yeah. just being nice. And the next question is, uh, well, this time you said something in English, didn't you? And the rabbi says, uh, <laughs> yes. Says, Could you turn to the jury and tell them what you said that wasn't Hebrew? And the rabbi said, well, maybe I said, oops. <laughs> at, at that point, at that point, there was no need for any further that's questions. That's your Perry Mason yeah, moment. Yeah, that's your Perry Mason moment. Yeah, I, I think, you know, unfortunately... Too often the movies get it terribly wrong. Right. Uh, you know, you, you, you get the you can't handle the truth, badgering of the witness type of thing. I know you were telling me the other day about some show that you're watching where the Superior Court judge was, it was a federal oh, court case. Yeah, it was in federal court and they were referring to the judge as a Superior Court judge. It, I mean, at least do your homework before uh, putting something on the air. Right. I won't call out the show because I really like the show, so I don't want to criticize <laughs> it, but uh, that was an uh, unfortunate error. So back on point, since we, we've kind of digressed, I know when, when you know sometimes we tend to get off a little bit on a tangent here and, and forgive us, but uh, the, the topic is what's in the name, right? And so uh, for, for, for those of you listening, again, the, the importance is, is choosing a name wisely to avoid the eye-catcher example. Sometimes you just can't prepare for that. Right, that... Not one they might have thought of. Right. Well, other considerations that folks should take into account. I know you mentioned copyright, trademark. I don't know how that plays Well, you into don't it. want your name to mis be misleading. Um, you uh, don't want to imply a health effect with a product. If you have a product... That, healthy cigarettes. That, healthy cigarettes, for example, would not be a good name. Um, that will be another show, by the way. <laughs> Gus used that example because if, if you were to go to my webpage or bio, you'd, you'd see that I spent several years representing the tobacco industry. Plug number two. Yeah, so there will be some, <laughs> I'm sure, interesting stories to tell along those lines. Uh, that's when I lived in North Carolina, back where, you know, when you live in North Carolina, you smoke them if you got them. It's, it was a little different than here in South Florida. Right, so you don't want them to be misleading. Right. I mean, I lived where the headquarters of R.J. Reynolds and Krispy Kreme were headquartered, which explains why I'm unhealthy and overweight. Um, so that's that's my <laughs> background. And, and, and what other considerations, I guess, when you're like, for instance, we were considering a, uh, looking at Attorney Confidential. If we had come across somebody else who had the name Attorney Confidential with with the show, um, I, I know I think the fact that we put with Gus and Neil certainly helps. And why is that? Well, it, because it's it's there's lack of confusion. If you if you have a name that's already being used, uh, based on copyright and trademark law, if you have a name that's already being used by someone else, you have to make it different enough so that there's no confusion in the right. marketplace. Um, the classic example of the recent case, uh, maybe it's been a year now, where the kale industry came up with eat more kale, and were sued by Chick Fil A because they thought. It actually infringed on Eat More Chicken, which is the Chick-fil-A slogan with two cows. And actually, Eat More Kale uh, abandoned the approach. And uh, for it whatever is, reason, yeah, I can see it's how a that's confusing. But does Chick-fil-A really have the right eat, eat more, more this, eat more that? I mean, so now if Krispy Kreme wanted to come up with Eat More Donuts, uh, would, would Chick-fil-A have Depends a Depends if they have cows in their commercials. Well, who knows? Um, but the cows make the milk that you drink when you eat the donuts. Okay. So. Well, we're going to go down a slippery slope there. I, <laughs> right. I'm going to... Digress. So I, I, the other thing that surprised me when I was picking a name for my law firm, for instance, that uh, I I did as a DBA, and and when you do it as a, a doing business as with SunBiz, you actually have to publish that name in in a, in a local newspaper, Daily Business Review, right. or South Florida Business Journal, the one offend either, um, or any any a certain circulation. Again, I think it's to avoid the conf make sure that anyone out there 
who may be looking at trade names under those. If, if they have your, the name that you're planning on using, they can get up and, and speak exactly. and object. And what Gus is talking about, a DBA is a doing business as. Correct. Uh, we, In fact, Gus, you're probably incorporated as Gustavo Alfonso Bravo oh, PA, yeah, right? Yeah, it just harkens back to the first day of school. Thanks for that. Um, it's Gustavo A. Bravo PA, and, and the reason I have the A in there is to break the rhyme. Gustavo Alfonso Bravo. My parents had a good sense of humor. Um, but, uh, yes, I'm incorporated as Gustavo A. Bravo PA, doing business as Bravo Law. And you're incorporated as... I'm Neil D. Kotze, PA, doing business as the law offices of Neil D. Right. Kotze. And, and, and these are little things that most folks don't understand. You know, they think that they've got a good name. It's, it's, it's great. I'm going to do great business. Make sure it's not misleading. But also make sure you take the proper steps to register. It's not just a trademark trade name uh, issues. It's also, you know, complying with just the, the state regulations. And, and making sure that that you you're you're not going to run into any kind of problems. So well, I, I think we're 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 kind of coming up to the end. And and I think what one of the things that we want to impart on our show here is the purpose to um, educate, to inform, and to entertain. And that's what we're hoping to do. Exactly. And and we'll end on a, on a, one of my favorite quotes. And I, I I use this a lot. And it's appropriate because tonight of the NCAA finals between Kentucky and Duke, uh, I'm a Tar Heel, so we won't tell you. Well, anyway. (laughs) But I'm going to quote someone from NC State, the late, great Jim Valvano. And what he said when he was receiving the ESPY Award many years ago before he passed away, uh, untimely death from cancer, was you should do three things every day. Uh, You should laugh every day. Uh, And hopefully you laugh at least once a day. You should be brought to tears at least once a day because it's healthy to cry, a good cry. And you should engage in deep thought at least once a day. And when you engage in deep thought, you become a better person. If you can do all three of those in one day, uh, you've had a really good day. And, And our goal will be to at least accomplish one, two, or maybe all three of those in our 30 minutes with you. And, uh, with that, we close go, uh, Wildcats and, uh, Happy Passover, happy Easter to everybody, and uh, we'll see you next week. Well said, and tune in next week from 6 to 6.30, Attorney Confidential with Gus and Neil. You have been listening to Attorney Confidential with Gus Bravo and Neil Kotze, two rated AV trial attorneys with over 40 years of experience. Tune in next week for another episode of entertainment, insight, and just plain fun. That's Monday, 6 p.m. on WNN. 1470 AM. See you next Monday for more Attorney Confidential. The opinions expressed on the preceding sponsored program were strictly